What's going on, family? I'm just here to remind you that you can get yourself a copy of my new book, On the Shoulders of Giants, Volume 4 of the Caribbean, by visiting my website, www.ontheshoulders1.com, and help support me as I continue on my mission to make sure that my people have our information, even though, you know, there are many people trying to stop us from learning our history. But hey, we can teach ourselves. And one of the tools we can use is my new book, On the Shoulders of Giants, Volume 4, The Caribbean. Remember, visit my website, www.ontheshoulders1.com to get your copy. And I appreciate your support. Mikaela Bestidas Puyakawa. In 1744, a Peruvian woman named Josefina Puyakawa Sisa gave birth to a baby girl named Mikaela Bestidas Puyakawa. The father of the baby was a man named Manuel Bestidas. Details on Manuel's life are not clear. Some scholars believe he was an African man. Other scholars believe he was a priest. Because of the uncertainty of Manuel's life, Micaela is believed to be of mixed indigenous Peruvian and African origins, but it is not confirmed. Micaela was born in the Pampamarca province of Canaz, Peru. Within the Pampamarca province, Micaela was considered an illegitimate child because of the possibility of her being mixed race. As a result, she was called a Zamba. She was often described as a very beautiful Indian girl who had very little education. She wasn't very fluent in Spanish. Her first language was Quechua, her indigenous language. Because of the Spanish occupation in Peru, Micaela, like other Peruvians, had become devout Christians instead of continuing their indigenous spiritual system. At the age of 16, Micaela met a man named Tupac Amaru II, the legendary Peruvian freedom fighter. Tupac Amaru II was a descendant of the great Tupac Amaru I, a monarch of the last Incan state and freedom fighter in Peru. Tupac Amaru II, like Micaela, was of mixed race, and in 1764, he became the chief of the Peruvian territories that included the Pampamarca, Tangasuca, and Surimana districts. Tupac and Micaela's marriage was positive and fruitful. The couple produced three sons and became a very prosperous family. As Tupac and Micaela's wealth grew, Tupac noticed that his people were not prospering. In fact, they were experiencing poverty and oppression, which led to revolts by the Peruvian people. Soon after, Tupac decided to join his people in revolt against the Spanish. Micaela was right by his side, ready to fight. Micaela and Tupac had rebelled against the Spanish for a number of years before the year 1780, which was the year the rebellion of Tupac Amaru II began. Tupac and his rebels were able to overtake the Tungasuka region of Peru. During the overtaking of Tungasuka, Tupac, Micaela, and the rebels defeated the Spanish commander Antonio de Arriga, then hung him. To give themselves the advantage against the Peruvians, the possession of weapons was outlawed, so the Peruvians had to obtain weapons and other resources by raids of Spanish camps. Micaela was in charge of the supplies and the logistics for the rebels. She mapped out routes to travel, made sure the rebels had food and supplies, managed and distributed money, obtained and distributed weapons, organized systems of communication, and even fought in battle. As Micaela, Tupac, and the rebels gained victories over the Spanish, they were free Peruvians that were being oppressed by the Spanish. Micaela and a woman named Amara established a program to help Peruvian women who were traumatized by the Spanish reincorporate back into Peruvian society. The rebels gained an important victory over the Spanish in November of 1780. The victory was important because the rebels were joined by the Creole, Mestizo, Zambo, and Indian ethnic groups to fight the Spanish. Micaela, Tupac, and the rebels would battle for another six months with the rebel army being 7,000 people strong. On May 18, 1781, Micaela suggested to Tupac that they launch a surprise attack against the Spanish. Tupac did not agree with her. Unknown to Tupac, the Spanish gained reinforcements to their army. During the next battle between the Spanish and the rebel army, the Spanish outnumbered and outgunned the rebel army. Both Tupac and Micaela were captured by the Spanish. Micaela was hung by the Spanish on May 18, 1871. Tupac was beheaded and one of their sons was also executed. Micaela was only 36 years old, but lived a life of resistance, fighting for her freedom against the Spanish. 
Meeting and marrying Tupac Amaru II changed the course of Micayela's life, but it also helped many Peruvian people oppressed by the Spanish gain their freedom. To Micayela Bastidas Puyucawa, we proudly stand on your shoulders. For more information, please visit my website at www.ontheshoulders1.com. There you can learn more about the various African heroes that I display. You can also purchase my books, especially my latest book, On the Shoulders of Giants, Volume 4, The Caribbean. You can also support me on Patreon at patreon.com backslash O-T-S-O-G. And if you hit that heart button under this video, you can support me there as well. I love you all, and I'll catch y'all next time.